Everybody on this planet old enough to have a strong sense of awareness knows who Superman is. The most iconic superhero of all time and an absolute icon. The poster boy of western superheroes and one of the most influential characters in fiction. And how does DC outside of modern comics like to treat him? Like absolute trash. They have been doing my boy so dirty over the past decade or so. You have a whole generation of people thinking Superman is a lame character and have no fondness of him as a character whatsoever and that is not okay. They claim he's too overpowered so that in turn makes him boring but you're literally missing the point of the character with that mentality. The best Superman stories aren't about him facing a threat just as, if not more powerful than he is, that leads to an epic showdown between hero and villain. It's weird how people assume a decent superhero story involves a character that cannot easily face an obstacle with sheer strength. The best Superman stories inspire people to stand up for themselves or delve in offering a beacon of hope in dark times as Superman represents the best of what humanity can be. Saying a Superman story wouldn't work in modern times is completely moronic as the Captain America trilogy in the MCU literally proves how you can take a hopeful character and put them in a modern setting where the world's viewpoints have shifted immensely, but the character himself still maintains that sense of optimism and doing what's right. In the viewpoint of normies, I guess you can't really blame them as there aren't many adaptations of Superman that capture the essence of his personality and what makes him so special, specifically in popular mediums like theatrical films. I'd challenge you to find one person who's actually read Superman comics and understands the character but still finds the character to be boring and lame. You probably can because the misunderstanding of the Superman character stems from exposure to media that directly doesn't comprehend what the character is about. And thus, there are fewer people willing to put some respect on my dog, Kal-El. You, you hate on a nigga. I don't why? understand why you hate on me, nigga. We don't understand. Show love, nigga. It don't oh. show nothing. It don't cost nothing to show a nigga love, All we doing nigga. is getting money. Show a nigga some love, nigga. The only couple of modern adaptations that first come to mind when I think of a decent Superman adaptation are Superman and Lois and My Adventures with Superman. So yeah, when I say modern, I'm talking like recent years, so the Donner films and the DCAU don't count. And since theatrical films are arguably the most popular form of exposure, when it comes to superheroes, it sucks even more that the most recent film version of Superman came in the form of the DCEU and the Snyderverse. I swear, Zack Snyder and them boys did not cook with their adaptation of Superman. They microwaved. British food levels of sorry with how they depicted the character. Beans on toast had ass. Henry Cavill was done so dirty by the people at Warner Brothers because with a decent enough script and direction, he really could have delivered something special. And it's even funnier now how Henry Cavill in real life acts more like Superman than he did in any of the Snyder films. Many aspects of this version of the character are just sauceless. There was legit zero chemistry between him and Amy Adams' Lois Lane. No authentic dynamic amongst DC's Trinity. They don't turn Lex Luthor into a freaking Redditor doing an impersonation of the Riddler. Boy, do we have problems up here. God is tribal. God takes sides. No man in the sky intervened when I was a boy to deliver me from daddy's fists and abominations. Mm. God is all powerful. He cannot be all good. Mm. Martha, Martha, Martha. It's cherry. Mm -hmm. Because the time has come. You're weird, buddy. You're weird. There is no significant emphasis on the Daily Planet, its supporting cast, or what the life of the Daily Planet is like. You know, Superman adaptation is about to be a stinker when they make Jimmy Olsen a CIA operative who gets killed in the first 10 minutes in the second film in this universe. CIA. Okay, and the most that fell asuka on Netherits. Or Tisinwala. It's okay, Lois. Metropolis has no unique visual aesthetic, character assassination of Jonathan Kent, and his death being one of the dumbest things I've ever had to lay eyes on. All right, we talked about this. You have... Oh, Clark, you have to keep this side of yourself a secret. What was I supposed to do? Just let him die? Maybe. What the fuck is this nigga talking about? I feel as if there's a lack of human connection with this version, it doesn't really convey the feeling that Superman has a strong, loving passion of humanity and is willing to do even the small things just to make the world a better place. A lot of average folk like to neglect the fact that even though he was born on Krypton, he spent his entire life on Earth. He literally grew up in a farm in Kansas with two loving parents, he's just as human as the rest of us. Making Batman vs Superman the second movie in this universe is one of the most mind-boggling creative decisions in recent memory. Why are they killing Superman in only his second major movie appearance? Are they stupid? And after Justice League, they didn't use Superman in the DCEU in any major way for five years straight as there were only two faceless cameos in Shazam and Peacemaker. But then things looked bright for the future when he returned in the post credit scene in Black Adam. <laughs> Bro, 
bro made a whole Instagram video and everything announcing his return. The entire fandom was hyped as hell and giddy and whatnot. Finally giving some love and attention to my boy. And then, boom. They said, actually, nah, he ain't coming back. How the fuck would you show me something if I couldn't have it? I just need to know who told him to make that video knowing full damn well his return to Superman wasn't set in stone and wasn't an official contract agreement. What's crazier is that James Gunn was writing the script for his Superman movie before they even shot the post credit scene for Black Adam, but for some reason they allowed The Rock to have Henry Cavill cameo at the end knowing they weren't ever gonna use him. What makes things even worse is how the start of the DCEU came out around the same time as Injustice Gods Among Us. Now I don't even hate the Injustice universe as I think it's a cool Elseworlds story if you read it on its own merits, but the problem mainly stems from how popular it is and I would be lying if I said it didn't do some reputable damage to the Superman character. Pretty much started the overused and tired evil Superman trope which sadly has been more utilized in the actual hopeful Superman. We Loki might be in the wrong timeline when you have such a large group of people who prefer a sadistic evil version of the character rather than his more traditional morals. The concept is interesting on a surface level but this version is straight up not Superman. Completely the opposite of what the character represents and stands for. The problem stems from how this is not a story that should be recommended to non-DC comics readers or regular folk who know very little about the mythos, but since the games are so popular, more likely than not this is the version of the character they are familiar with. And don't even get me started with Injustice Wonder Woman, that woman is sadistic and evil to her core, manipulated Clark's whole grief which ultimately led to the events of that whole story. Having Superman's more modern depictions and video games set in scenarios where he's evil or mind controlled is crazy work. And in the case of Suicide Squad Killer Justice League, it's one of the worst written narratives in any modern superhero game. Absolute disgrace they tried to have us believe this takes place in the Batman Arkham continuity. The plot armor of the Suicide Squad is horrendous and the deaths of each individual Justice League member is completely moronic and nonsensical. Absolutely no respect is given to these characters aside for Wonder Woman in which the writers glaze over her character like crazy for some reason. You know, instead of giving some respect to the character this entire continuity is based around and the character who put Rocksteady on the map. Green Lantern's death is atrocious, The Flash is idiotic, Wonder Woman is the only one with a worthy sacrifice, I will never forget what they did to my glorious King Arkham Batman. In the case of Superman in this game, he's not really in it all that much, bro probably has like 2 minutes of speaking lines in the main game while the rest of the dialogue is just delegated to audio logs in the game's menu. His boss fight is so anticlimactic and lame due to the core gameplay mechanic of it being a looter shooter. And I know some people for whatever reason will come to this garbage game's defense talking about some well the squad had access to gold kryptonite so obviously they would have a chance against superman. Oh, I don't care. My nigga, no it does not. Even if they have weapons capable of injuring Superman, that still doesn't change the fact that it wouldn't weaken him as you see Captain Boomerang throw a gold kryptonite boomerang at him which cuts his hand but he still disintegrates it with his heat vision. The gold kryptonite in question does not affect his speed, strength, or abilities in any way so he should still be able to wipe out each individual squad member in seconds without him even noticing. But they're decked out in gold kryptonite so that Superman can't get close to them. You'll literally see the death animations that are more logical than the boss fight itself. Darkness, try to be brave. Like bro is just standing there letting them shoot him and his death is so lame he doesn't even get a cutscene or anything, he just dies like an NPC. Like just the four of us sent your ass back to Krypton, kal -El. Gonna stay tapped out this time? I really hope he's dead. Come on, live in the moment, Boomer. Well, we only went and did it, you bloody beauties! We killed Superman! Hell, we murdered the whole Justice League! in self-defense since they were all totally evil. Oh, yeah. And to prevent some level of keyboard warriors trying to defend this game's stupidity, the Justice League are clearly alive or they're just clones, they'll come back in the future. Shut your bitch ass up! <laughs> This is a serious question. How does the Justice League not actually being dead make the game's story any better? If anything, if since these are clones, they should be more amped up versions of the League, which is shown that the kryptonite that was used to stab Superman didn't kill him on the spot, and how Luther stated that Brainiac's mind control altered their DNA. Not to mention, this is the sorriest version of the Justice League with over 90% of Metropolis population confirmed dead, and Superman's stupidity being the cause of Brainiac's invasion. I understand your caution, really. But that thing hasn't even fired a warning shot yet. I don't like it. I know, Bruce. But we have an example to set. Especially today. 
What if I had come to Earth and... Cal, buddy, I mean, let's be real. You didn't show up in a giant skull. I didn't choose how I got here, Flash. Now, I'll admit it's not the most inviting presence, but if we can avoid fighting altogether, we owe it to the people of Metropolis to try. That's I'm done. Cut the show. I'm done. Take me off. The Justice League being alive doesn't change a goddamn thing. It is an ineffective defense towards this game's narrative. They really made the Suicide Squad the all-star team in the Arkhamverse with them being capable of defeating Brainiac instead of the League themselves. This game's rating should be a strong rock steady never cook again out of 10. And I've got to say in all honesty, um, it's the biggest piece of dog shit. Hey, all I'm saying is that things would have turned out a lot better if WB instead enforced the mandate for Rocksteady to develop a single player open world AAA Superman game. A Superman trilogy of games made by the team who crafted the Arkham series would have been the moneymaker WB Games has been so desperately seeking. Now, technically they could still make a Superman game, but like, what's even the point? I don't really have much faith in this current version of Rocksteady and most of the Metropolis population is dead, so I don't even know how they'll tackle that unless they make a prequel. And if that's the case, I wouldn't even have the game set in the Arkhamverse, just let it be its own thing. Best case scenario a developer outside of Rocksteady and WB Games Montreal develops a banger Superman game which should honestly be one of the top priorities within WB as bro hasn't gotten a game since 2006 and the whole he's too overpowered excuse is just some BS and screams laziness yes a Superman game would require more creative thought than let's say a Batman game but you can still have fun gameplay when the center character is powerful you don't need to depower him or have some other nonsense to me it just comes off as a lack of understanding of the Superman mythos and lore man it's just so sad to see how much they've disrespected Superman across different media in recent years outside of modern comics. Hell, even in the comics, there was a period after DC Rebirth where Brian Michael Bendis took over the Superman book and did some very questionable decisions like breaking up Superman's family with him and Lois, making his identity public, aging up Superman's son Jonathan Kent, effectively rushing what could have been years of character development. But because comics, most of those things have been rectified and the most recent Superman book by Joshua Williamson is pretty solid. I hope in the recent years to come with the start of the DCU and James Gunn Superman, they'll start to give proper recognition and respect to the character. And I'm not gonna lie, the casting for the movie so far got me giddy as hell with some peak casting. David Cornstone as Superman? Peak. Rachel Brosnan has Lois Lane? Phenomenal. They cook too much with this one. Gala Gazondo as Jimmy Olsen? One to one in terms of appearance. Nicholas Holt as Lex Luthor? Just take my money! Just take my money! My money! Just take my money, just take my money! While it's too soon to say how good it will be, I'd say we're more likely than not getting a theatrical version of Superman that is crafted by someone who actually understands or has a decent understanding of the character and what he represents and how it'll impact the DC Universe going forward. My heroes didn't fucking, you know, lie to America. My heroes didn't, you know, embezzle money from their corp. My heroes didn't fucking commit any atrocities. I'm like, that's cool, but you're living in a fucking dream world, okay? Good. Dreams save us. Dreams lift us up and transform us into something better. And on my soul, I swear that until my dream of a world where dignity, honor, and justice are the reality we all share, I'll never stop fighting, ever.